All right, good morning, folks. Andrew Sluter, pastor of Bible Baptist Church here in Asheville, North Carolina, your host for another edition of the Daily Dive, where we dive right in to God's Word. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. We had a great weekend here at Bible. I flew in Monday, or excuse me, I flew in Saturday morning from Florida. We went out, I ate some lunch with my family, then we went out on bus visitation, visited the bus kids, passing out some tracks, and then yesterday we had a great service, uh, both services. Yesterday morning was just unbelievably good. It was unbelievably good. People were getting help. We had several uh, returning visitors. I think we had one or two first-time visitors, and so good crowd. We had a phenomenal crowd last night, and so the Lord really worked yesterday. And uh, and our numbers were good. They were decent. We had several missing, but still had, I think, right around 70 or so. So the Lord was just moving and blessing. Hey, today is October the 1st. Man, it's hard to believe that uh, 2018 is almost over. Unbelievable. And today is National Hair Day. So, <laughs> oh, National Hair Day. And uh, listen, ladies, you need to tease that hair up. Te My wife always says you got to tease it to Jesus. The, the higher the hair, the closer to God. Hello. Uh, na it's, hey, it's National Homemade Cookies Day. So I doubt my sister, Julia, is going to watch this. But Julia, if you happen to have a spiritual bone in your body and happen to watch this morning's broadcast, you need to make some of those homemade uh chocolate chip cookies that you make because it is National Homemade Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. It's also National Fire Pup Day. So National Fire Pup Day, I guess that's Rescue Dogs. National Child Health Day, so make sure your child's healthy today. And it's National Consignment Day. Don't tell my wife she'll be at the Goodwill all day, amen? So anyway, all right, folks. Well, listen, we are going to dive right in this morning to a very misunderstood and very... uh uh confusing to a lot of people. It's not the Bible's not confusing on it. The Bible's actually very clear. But it is but a lot of people are confused. It is the topic of what is fornication and what is adultery. What is fornication and what is adultery. Now, I want you to understand this very clearly. This is coming I've been meaning to do this video for a while and I was going to do this on YouTube. But I said, you know what? My YouTube channel not it's not going to get as many views uh, as a Facebook video would do. So I need you guys to like and share this to get this truth out because this is a huge confusion in the independent Baptist world. And believe it or not, and I'm going to explain to you in just a minute, the thing of adultery versus fornication is actually, hey there, brother AJ, uh, is actually going to, is actually being used against guys to try to eliminate one of the exception clauses for divorce and remarriage. So as everybody knows, it's no secret, I believe that it is perfectly okay for a person to be divorced and remarried and still preach or pastor as long as there is a biblical reason. And I believe the biblical reasons for a divorce or you know or a marriage being ended is fornication, Matthew 19, 9, abandonment, 1 Corinthians 7, 15, and death, Romans 7, 1 through 3. I think those are the three biblical reasons. Now, the problem is, or the, the accusation is, is that fornication... Well, wait a second. Let, let's go to Matthew 19. 9. You're going to want to follow along with me in your Bible this morning. Trust me. And if you're a guy that believes like me, you've probably heard this accusation, but you want to follow along with me. Matthew chapter 19 and verse number 9. Look at what Jesus says. We're going to get to the beginning part of the ver of the chapter in just a second, but I want you to notice what Matthew nineteen nine says. And I say unto you, this is Jesus talking, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery. Now, I want you to notice here. What they will say is we'll see these people are not married as in to come together yet. They're just engaged because, notice the Bible says fornication, and we know that fornication is sex before marriage, and adultery is sex after marriage. That's what it is, duh. And I was raised believing and in, 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 in teaching that. I was taught that very thing. And what they'll do is they'll take Matthew 19 and say, see, this is, this is, a, this is a Mary and Joseph situation. Go to Matthew chapter 1. Go to Matthew chapter 1. 
And look at what it says in Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 18. How many, I mean, comment really quick. I'm not going to acknowledge everybody that comments, but how many of you have heard that Matthew 19, well, that doesn't mean if your spouse cheats on you, you can divorce them and marry somebody else. That has to do with people who are engaged. If you find out the woman you're engaged to has had, you know, uh, sex before, then that means you can call off the engagement. This is talking about a Hebrew custom. I've even heard guys go as far as say, if you find out that your wife is had sex before and you found out that she wasn't a virgin when you married her and somehow, and I've heard different things before you consummate the marriage or even after you find, like all this crazy stuff. And they'll use Mary and Joseph as a proof text for Matthew 19. Well, that's all that's talking about. Jewish custom. They are engaged for a year, but they're called husband and wife. And that's true. In, in the Jewish custom, a man and wife are engaged for a year, and they're called man and wife. Let's read Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 18. Matthew 1, 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, so we find there they're espoused, and before they came together, before they had sex, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. So notice, we find this very thing going on. Joseph is going to put her away. Now that putting, putting away is the biblical phrase for divorce. She's been put away. I've divorced her. Now folks, here's the thing. What this is referring to what the what the marriage or espousing of Mary and Joseph is referring to is Deuteronomy 22. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 22. Trust me, you're going to want to follow along because this is good stuff. Deuteronomy chapter 22. This is irrefutable stuff. If you're watching this and you disagree with me, I love you, but you can't refute anything I'm about to say. And I'd love to see you try. Deuteronomy 22. Look at Deuteronomy 22, verse number 13. Deuteronomy 22, 13. If any man take a wife and go in unto her, that is biblical language for they have sex, and hate her and give occasions of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman. When I came to her, I found her not a maid. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hateth her. And lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter's maid, I found not thy daughter a maid. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity, and they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him, and they shall immerse him in an hundred shekels of silver, and give them unto the father of the damsel, because he hath brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. Now pay attention here. I don't want to get into all the details. You can study what all this is talking about on your own, okay? But basically, there was a way for them to prove whether or not she was a virgin. And the father was to have the tokens of her virginity. We have the proof that she is a virgin. You can study all that on your own time, okay? And if this man were, if this man were to marry this virgin and try to accuse her of being a whore, she's had sex before marriage. Then they were to bring, and, and the father, they're bringing for the elders of the city, and the father lays out the cloths and said, this is the proof. But now notice, verse number 20, but if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of a father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she hath wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house, so shalt thou put evil away from among you. So notice, that correlates directly with what Matthew 1 is referring to. Joseph being a just man and not wanting to make Mary a public example 
put her away privily. He did it privately. He did it under wraps. Mary is obviously with child. Of course, everybody not knowing that it's by the Holy Ghost thinks that she's a whore. That in fact, the Jews, that's reported among the Jews even today that Jesus was a bastard child. Okay? Now, go back to Matthew. Well, see, yeah, that's exactly right, preacher. That's, that's what Matthew 19, Jesus is talking about that. Not after you get married and, and she cheats on you. Whoa, wait a second. Go back to Matthew 19. Go back to Matthew 19. Now, let's look at the beginning part of the verse, or the beginning part of the chapter. Go to Matthew chapter 19 and verse number 3. Matthew chapter 19 and verse number 3. Pay attention here. you got to watch this. Watch this now. This is absolutely unbelievable. Watch it now. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful? For a man to put away his wife, notice the next two verses, or the next two phrases, for every cause. So the Pharisees come to Jesus and they say, is it lawful to divorce your wife for any reason? Verse number four, and he answered and said unto them, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. So Jesus is saying, once you're married, stay married. Verse number seven, they say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? Notice, they are referring back to a writing of divorcement and putting a wife away. They ask him, is it lawful to, to put away for every cause? For anything. Look at verse number 8. He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. So the original plan of God was for men and women, once they're married, not to be divorced. There is not a single preacher on planet earth that believes like I do that says that God's original plan was divorce. That is absolutely not true. Okay? In fact, the Bible says, and oh, my mind is completely slipping me here. Um, but somewhere in the Old Testament, it's in one of the minor prophets that God hates putting away. It might be Habakkuk. I cannot remember, though, to save my life. It's completely slipping in my mind. But God hates putting away. God hates divorce. Now, notice this. But he says, because of the hardness of your hearts, the Lord permitted. He said, because of sin, because there would be sin entering in, God allowed you to divorce. But notice what he says. And I say unto you, as Jesus often did, Jesus kind of tightened the screws on the law. He said, and I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. Now notice, it is, we're going to see now, it is impossible for Jesus to be referring to, or for them to be talking about, a Deuteronomy 22 situation. In Deuteronomy 22, the woman is not given a bill of divorcement. If she's found out to be a fornicator in Deuteronomy 22, as far as before they come together, she's not a virgin, she's to be stoned to death. You hear that? She's to be stoned to death. And by the way, adultery in the Old Testament was you were stoned to death. You were not given a bill of divorcement. So this has nothing to do with any of that. Yeah, it's Malachi 2.16, Brother Martell. God hates putting away. Thank you. Now notice, you say, well, preacher, then what is this referring to? This is referring to Deuteronomy 24. Go back to Deuteronomy. Go back to Deuteronomy. Follow along here. You're not going to want to miss this. There are two places in Deuteronomy that deal with situations like this. Look at Deuteronomy 24. Now remember, Deuteronomy 22 is the Mary and Joseph situation. They're espoused. They're called husband and wife. 100% agree. Hang on just a second. Something popped up on my phone there. 100% agree. They're called husband and wife. But the Bible says here in Deuteronomy 24, look at what it says. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass, Deuteronomy 24, 1, that she find no favor in his eyes because he hath found some uncleanness in her. Oh, well, there it is, preacher. There, there's, there's, the, there's the uncleanness. Well, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You cross-reference the word uncleanness and the word unclean and see how many times or how many different situations a woman can be unclean. 
She can be unclean for a plethora of reasons in the Old Testament. A man can be unclean for a plethora of reasons in the Old Testament. This just says some uncleanness in her. Let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. In Deuteronomy 22, where a, a, where a woman is found out not to be a virgin, there's no writing of divorcement. There's no, you know, some uncleanness. There's no giving her and sending her out of the house. No, she's taken to her father's house and stoned to death. So when Jesus is talking, when the Pharisees are asking him, notice what it says, Deuteronomy 24, 1, because he had found some uncleanness, she, he, she finds no favor in his eyes because he had found some uncleanness in her. Notice what the, uh, the, the Pharisees say in Matthew 19. They said, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Can you just divorce your wife because she finds no more favor in your eyes? That's what they're asking about. They're asking about Deuteronomy 24, not about Deuteronomy 22. Look at what it says, for Deuteronomy 24, 2. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. The scripture is very plain, folks. Verse number three. And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and giveth it in her hand and sendeth her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. After that, she is defiled, for that is abomination before the Lord, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for inheritance. So in the Old Testament, if you got divorced from your, from your spouse, you weren't allowed to remarry them. Ooh, interesting stuff there. That ruins, listen, that messes up a whole lot of preaching in our IFB circles today. So now I want you to notice here, in light of that, and understanding that there's a difference between finding, um, finding out that a virgin is unclean, or excuse me, finding out that, that, that a woman's not actually a virgin when she said you, and you married her on false pretenses, there's a difference between that and, and then later on, you just get tired of your spouse or whatever. Because in the Old Testament, if you found some uncleanness in her, you could divorce her. And do, I'm not going to take time, but you cross-reference, look up uncleanness, and look up unclean and see how many times in the Bible, or how many things in the Old Testament law you'd be unclean for. So notice, Deuteron excuse me, Matthew 19 is not talking about a Mary and Joseph situation. And you cannot show that from the Bible. If you believe that, that's fine. But you're believing it because you just want to believe it. You're not believing it because the Bible teaches that. So when you have Matthew 19, they're asking them about Deuteronomy 24, every cause. Jesus then goes on to say in Matthew 19, 9, that if you put away your wife, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another committeth adultery. Now, here's the thing. Well, why does it say fornication? Is not fornication sex before marriage? Well, here's the thing. If you look up fornication in a Webster's 1828 dictionary, and I'm going to do it right now. I've got one on my iPad, so I'm going to look up right now fornication, and I'm going to read it to you exactly as it appears in the Webster's 1828 dictionary. First, first uh, definition. The incontinence or lewdness of unmarried persons, male or female, also the criminal conversation of a married man with an unmarried woman. So we find there that an, uh, a married person having sex with an unmarried person, that also is fornication. Second definition, adultery. Adultery. And the cross-reference there in the Webster's 1828 is Matthew 5.32. And if you look at Matthew 5.32, it says exactly what Matthew 19.9 says. Third is incest. And then the fourth is idolatry. All right, how about this? We're going to look up the forna, uh, fornicator or fornicate, fornicate. Fornicate, to commit lewdness as an unmarried man or woman or as a married man with an unmarried woman. So there we find that Webster's 1828 Dictionary clearly says that fornication can be between somebody that is married. It's so plain. It is so plain. We're going to look up fornicator. Fornicator. Fornicator, an unmarried person, male or female, who has criminal conversation with other sex. Also, a married man who has sexual commerce with an unmarried woman. Second definition, a lewd person. Here's the thing, folks. Well, why doesn't it say adultery right there, preacher? Why can't... I mean, now, here, here, we're getting down to the nitty... To quote Nacho Libre. Some of y'all love that. To quote Nacho Libre. We're getting down to the nitty-gritty. All right? Here it is. 
The reason why Jesus uses the word fornication here and not adultery is because fornication is an actual physical act. It's an actual physical act. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 18. Do not miss this. Don't miss it. Look at what it says. So look at what it says here in verse number 15. Let's, get, let's bump up to get a good context. 1 Corinthians 6, 15. 1 Corinthians 6, 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. So we find that the joining of flesh, you become one flesh, the same terminology used in relation to the marriage between a man and wife in Matthew 19, they twain shall be one flesh, is used when you go out and sleep with a harlot. Boy, that messes up some good theology. Look at verse number 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Now notice 1 Corinthians 16, 18. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. So fornication is a sin of the body. It is a sin against the very body that they have. Why does, he, why does Jesus not say adultery? Why does he say fornication? Because fornication is a physical act that's done with the body. Notice adultery. Go to Matthew chapter 5. Go to Matthew chapter 5. Adultery is not always a physical act. Go to Matthew chapter 5. Go to Matthew chapter 5. Adultery can be a physical act, but notice Jesus says in Matthew 5, 28. Notice Matthew 5, 28. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So adultery can be committed without the body, in the heart, with you know, by even a single person, a single person, a young teenage guy looking on a girl with lust, has committed adultery already with her in his heart. So notice the Bible is super clear. Fornication can be committed inside a marriage when you go outside of the marriage and commit a lewd act physically. Adultery can be committed by a single person within the heart. So if, if that, that means, listen, if Jesus were to say adultery there, then that means every time a husband looks at a woman that is not his wife out of lust, and that happens all the time, then guess what? That woman could say, you just looked on her with lust. You've committed adultery with her. and You're an adulterer. Jesus said, I could divorce you for looking at that girl. Boom. Mic drop. Hello. That's the book. Now listen, it's not about me being right and everybody being wrong about this issue. It's about what does the Bible say. And the Bible is super clear. There's no gray area. There's no Listen, if you want to believe something different, that's fine. You can have your own little opinions. But don't you dare, don't you dare call anything. Listen, if you disagree with anything I just said here as far as the whole divorce and remarriage and what Matthew 19 is talking about, Hey, you can believe whatever you want to this America, but don't you dare call it Bible, because it ain't. Now, you say, Preacher, you're getting awfully cooked up. Yeah, I'm getting a little cooked up about this, because I've had people who have labeled me heretics, uh, uh, who have labeled me a heretic, a false teacher. I've had people break fellowship with me. I've had people try to destroy my ministry simply for believing this. Now, you understand, I've only been married to one woman in my whole life. I, my wife, Lauren Sluter, is the only girl I've ever been with in my entire life. Our first kiss was on the altar at our wedding, hand before God. We did not share a kiss with each other until we said, I do, at, our, at the marriage altar. Now, you want to say that somehow I'm promoting adultery or I'm promoting fornication or I'm promoting divorce? Get that out of here, man. The Bible is clear. And if you're going to try to say, oh, well, uh, you, can't, you can't divorce for, because your spouse cheated on you. No, Jesus 100% said you could. If my wife ever cheats on me, I have every right to divorce her 
and marry somebody else and never miss a beat pastoring here at Bible Baptist Church. And that's the book. Well, now how about this? Well, you didn't rule your own house well. You, she, it, obviously, she wouldn't have left you if you'd have been a better husband. Oh, really? Well, Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse number 8 says that Israel committed adultery on God and went out and played the harlot on the Lord. And the Bible says that God gave Israel a bill of divorcement. Was God not a good husband? Was God Could God have been a better husband? Well, I don't know if I'd sit under a pastor that was divorced. Okay, would you sit under a God that was divorced? Because he is. Read Jeremiah 3, 8. It's the book. Here it is, folks. Here it is. I'm not, I'm, listen, I'm, 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 I'm mad. I'm mad at people who are going to make attacks on men and ministries and people that have suffered from the cruel, cruel uh, fate of having a spouse that abandoned them or cheated on them. I've seen it firsthand with personal friends of mine. Now, listen, I held this position before any of my friends ever suffered from divorce. I held this position a year and a half after me and my wife got married. I switched over this position when I was at my first church. And thank God I didn't have to change my beliefs once it started affecting others in my personal life. But I am sick and tired of these men and these preachers and these pastors downgrading and, and, and ridiculing men who have suffered from the cruel fate of having a spouse that cheated on them or abandoned them and they're they're forced to resign their churches and to quit preaching. And if they want to if they want to keep preaching, they have to stay celibate for the rest of their lives. That is a concept 100% foreign to the Bible. Like it or lump it, it's the book. All right. Well, I love you. I'm, we've gone over, but I knew this was going to go over. This is a very important. Like and share this, please. I'm, I'm listen. I'm not begging. Who cares? Put a black, put it, put put the emoji f figure over my face for all I care. Make my voice sound like one of those anonymous, you know, they're interviewing those people. Make it sound like an anonymous person. I am not the least bit interested in, in having my name or my face out there. I'm interested in the truth going out. That's what I'm concerned. I'm concerned about truth. So like and share this video. Get the word out. I'm sure that there's going to be a whole bunch of blow up. And if I, listen, if I've seemed contentious, I apologize. But this is the word of God. This is the truth. And I love the book and I love truth. So there you have it, folks. The, the biblical difference, the real difference between adultery and fornication. And we've laid it all out there in the Bible. Hey, folks, I love, whatever your position is, I love you. I love you. And you say, well, preacher, why do you get so worked up about this? Well, listen, if this was just one of those places where we could agree to disagree on, I'd be fine. But see, unfortunately, there are men who take it upon themselves to absolutely ruin. I've had people who've tried to ruin, literally, they have said they want me out of the ministry because I believe this. So as soon as these guys quit trying to ruin people for believing this and for actually having to act out on this and say, you know what, my spouse cheated on me multiple times, I'm divorcing her, divorcing her. I'm going to remarry and I'm going to keep preaching because Matthew 19 clearly says that. As soon as these guys quit trying to destroy other people over this, that's when I'll quit pitching a fit about it. How about that? Deal? Deal? Is that a deal? As soon as you guys start believing the book, I'll quit pitching a fit about it. Anyway. All right, folks. I love you. Hey, pray for us here at Bible. We've got a lot of good, exciting things going on. And uh, and I'm glad that... Uh, I'm glad that uh, the Lord is working and moving. Hey, if I can ever be a blessing to you or your church, let me know. I'm I'm start this month. I'm going to start booking for next year. I've already got several meetings on the books for next year. So uh, if you'd like to have me in, um, then great. If not, great. If you just want to show, if you just want to use my videos, but you hate me personally, <laughs> that's fine too. I'm a, I just want the truth out there. Amen. All right, folks. I love you. I'm praying for you. God bless you. Be back tomorrow at 9:45 for another edition of the Daily Dive. Have a good day in the Lord.